everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to talk about how to create a dreamy seascape. I'm noticing that something went wrong with my camera so give me just a moment and let me see if I can get that back up and running. And while I'm doing that let me just say hello to Claire, Pat, Robert, Joseph. So glad you guys are able to join me today. It's great to see all of you. All right, well, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started and I will turn off that picture in picture since my camera is not working. So sorry about that. All right, so on the screen, we have a beautiful image that I captured in La Jolla, California several years ago. And it was a really soft kind of pastel night. And I wanted to enhance the dreamy nature of this image. So let me show you where I started. And here's the before and here's the after. So it's a long exposure image. We can take a look here at my raw metadata here. It was shot with the Canon 7D, 24 to 105 f4L lens. And this was a f4, I was at f4 and six seconds at 100 ISO. So that six second exposure is what gives us that kind of creamy look here to the water. And as I do my edits, I definitely wanna preserve that. So let me walk you through how I got from the unfinished to the finished. I'm going to right click on the adjust on the image, go to adjustments and revert this to the original. Hello, Russ. Glad you were able to jump in. Okay. So from here, I'm going to go straight over to our edit tab and I'm going to skip over templates for today. And I'm going to start with our enhance AI. So a few people have asked me recently if Luminar AI has an auto button or an auto tone, something that's a one click, you can go ahead and just um, automatically improve a few things. Well, that's what we do with templates, but if you're looking for an auto tool, this is our Enhance AI. It targets 12, about 12 different facets of your image, including exposure, tone, color, contrast, and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that up to automatically improve my image. And I like the fact that we have a slider instead of a button, so that way you can increase or decrease that amount as you see fit. I'm actually gonna bring it up quite high in this image and I think that looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, Jerry was asking if I was using an ND filter. I think I was, although you can tell that the light was pretty low. So if it was late enough, I might have been able to get that long exposure without using an ND, but I do often use ND filters. Great question. All right, so from here, I wanna go ahead and refine my composition. As I look at this image, my horizon line is almost dead center, and that's not typically something that you wanna do. So I'm gonna to go to my composition AI, and I'm going to change this to a four by five aspect ratio. And I'll move that down a little bit because I wanna keep that beautiful, soft, creamy water at the bottom. I don't mind losing a little bit of the top of the rock. And that brings us down a lot closer to having that horizon line at the rule of thirds. I can even bring this in a little bit closer if I wanna be super precise. And I think that's actually a really nice balanced look. We go ahead and hit return on my keyboard to go ahead and commit that crop. And now we can do a few creative things with this. First, I wanna enhance the detail here on the rocks and maybe even bring out a little bit of detail here in our clouds. So I'll go to Structure AI and bring that amount up. And you'll see that that's bringing out wonderful detail on that rock and even doing some really nice things with the clouds. Now, if I turn this off, and then back on again, you'll see that we lost some of that creamy, beautiful texture in the foreground. It's actually made it a little bit harsher than I'd like. So I'm gonna use a masking brush to get rid of it. I'll go into my masking tool and click the erase, and then I'll make my brush a bit bigger. And actually I'm making it smaller there. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard, and I'm just gonna brush this out on these areas to remove the effect from the water. Now, as I get in here and I get in some of the smaller areas, I can then make my brush a bit smaller, come in here and just clean up some of those edges and make sure that I have everything showing that I want. So to go ahead and see where I'm brushing, I can show and hide my mask by going to the ellipses and clicking on show mask. And you'll see everything in red is getting the structure effect. Everything that I've painted out has removed the red and so I wanna get a little bit cleaner here, remove a little bit more of that red from the image, which is gonna remove that structure so we can really keep that nice, soft look here. I'll go ahead and bring that in a little bit closer there and come in a little closer up here. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Clean that up a little in that corner. Now I can turn that mask overlay off. So I go to hide mask. And now we've applied that structure just to the sky into these rocks and a little bit to these rocks down here, which I think looks so much better. 
Now, as I'm looking at this, the color balance seems just a touch off. So I'm gonna go back up one here to my light tool and adjust my white balance. Since this was a daylight shot, I'm gonna go into my, my presets here and I'm gonna choose daylight. And look how that just kind of toned down the warm tones a little bit and brought us more into the realm of pastels. I think it's really nice that way, um, but you can certainly warm that up if that's what your taste is. Let's see here. Um, Jerry asked, did I try any of the coastal ocean templates? Um, you know, I don't know that I did for this one. I actually kind of knew where I wanted to go for this image. So I went straight over to the edit tab, but you can certainly click through the templates and see if there's one that gets you there faster than going through each of the individual tools. All right. So from there, I want to go down to our color tool. And this is where we can control individual colors by using our HSL. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And we have three different options here in this menu. Hue is going to be the actual color. So we can, if we're in here in the Hue, we can say take our red tones, move them more pink, make them more orange. Our orange tones make them more pink, make them more yellow, and so forth. So the Hue is changing the actual hue of a color. Saturation is going to be the amount of pigment that's applied with that color. And luminance is gonna be the lightness or darkness of that color. We're gonna work with hue, and I wanna play with our oranges and yellows up here. So let's take our, let's start here with the red, and we'll see that there's actually quite a bit of red in this image as I move this back and forth. So I'm gonna move that red slider a little bit to the left. We'll take those oranges, we'll move those a little bit to the left, not too much because you can see it starts to get really unnatural. So I'm gonna back that off and just use a little bit just to give a little bit more glow to those clouds. And you'll see as I'm bringing this through the light from the sky, those pinks and those yellows are reflecting on this rock. So you wanna make sure that the effect over here doesn't get too strong. Now that light color, it will definitely reflect on the rocks, but you just wanna make sure it still looks natural. All right, we can even start to work with those yellows. Now watch as I move this yellow slider, especially on the rocks. You'll see that I'm completely changing the color of this moss here. And I don't wanna do that. And it's really not having a huge effect in the sky. So I'm going to bring that back quite a bit. I don't wanna to use too much of this because I don't wanna change the color of the moss. So right about there looks good. And let's take a look at the before and the after. And that just kind of pops the mood of the image. Let's see here. Uh, Jerry says we should review my coffee break on the color wheel. That was a great episode. I think that would definitely be one worth redoing. Thank you for the suggestion. All right, from there, let's go down into our creative tools and add a bit of mystical. So I'm gonna bring this amount slider up quite a bit. And you'll notice it's kind of adding to that enchantment and ambiance of the image. Now, if I pull it up too high, it starts to get a little too glowy, a little too soft. So I'm gonna bring that back down right about there. And I'm also gonna back off the smoothness. Now, you'll, even though I've done that, it's brought back some of, the, some of the detail here, but it still kind of enhances the mood, that dreamy seascape. So let me turn that off and then back on again. I like what that did, but it also darkened down some of our um, shadows. So I'm gonna actually bring those back up to make sure we keep the details in those darker areas. Now, one thing I always like to do is go down into colorize and work with this warmth slider. For a lot of images, I will end up moving this warm slider to the right. But in this case, because we're kind of going for those cool pastels, I'm actually gonna move this to the left. And you'll see that that even intensifies those beautiful pastel colors. So let's take a look at the before and the after. I really like what that did. Now I might actually bring that amount up a little bit higher and pull those shadows back down a little bit. And I think that is a really good balance. Now the final thing I wanna add here is a touch of Atmosphere AI. And you see down here at the bottom where it's very soft, we have that long exposure. There's definitely some sea spray happening there and I wanna intensify it a little bit by adding in a bit of fog and mist. So if we go here to our Atmosphere AI tool, I'm gonna to pull up the amount slider and we can take a look at what each mode of fog does. So right now we have fog, here's layered fog, and we can go down to mist and haze, and I like to see what each of them does and how they impact the, the image. For this image, I'm gonna go with layered fog, and you'll see that it's really just impacting this area down here, which if you're standing by the sea, that's where you're going to be actually be feeling the spray of the ocean, and it just makes the most sense for me and adds a little bit of extra 
I don't know, ambiance, enchantment, whatever you want to call it. So we can now adjust that amount, adjust the depth a little bit, make that a little bit deeper. And if you feel like it's a little bit too light, you can always back it off just a touch. And now we can take a look at the before and the after. It's a very, very subtle change. I'm actually going to bring that lightness back up and bring up the amount a little bit more, add a bit more depth. And now we can take a look again at the before and the after. That looks really, really good. So now let's take a look at our results as a whole. Here's the before. And here's where we ended up. And I think it's just absolutely lovely. It's a very soft, pastel, dreamy evening down by the ocean. You can almost feel that mist on your face as you're sitting here looking at this shot. I really enjoyed capturing it and processing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And it gives you some ideas for what you can do with your own seascape photos. Let me take a quick look here at the comments and see if there's any other thoughts or suggestions. Uh, Jerry says, did I try a horizontal shot? You know, I took a lot of shots that evening. I don't remember if I did a horizontal one of this particular composition or not. I'll have to go back to my archives and check. I actually have those all in my Lightroom catalog. I only moved this one over here to Luminar for this demonstration, so I can't check this moment, but I'll definitely go back and look. Um, if you have any other thoughts, questions about this image or this process, make sure to put them into the chat or into the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and getting your feedback. So if you're enjoying these episodes, make sure you give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. We always love seeing those. Our producers love seeing them. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy the rest of your week. We'll be back with you tomorrow for our Friday New Artist Friday episode. Um, and then we'll have a break for the weekend, which is awesome. So it looks like there is one more comment here. Can someone do a demo if there isn't one already on Image 3D Transform under the Composition AI tab? That is a great idea, David. We'll add that to the queue. Thank you guys so much for being here today, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.